Hello everyone, welcome back to more Halloween time! Yes, we're still in October, we're still making more videos every single day just for your entertainment. Today we'll be checking out Lynn. It's supposed to be a psychological visual no nibble. Blah, blah. Let me try that again. We'll be playing Lynn today. It's supposed to be a psychological horror that is a visual novel. I'm not sure what to expect from this. Like, it looks okay. And it's supposed to be a short story too, so... There is that. But it did pique my interest, so I thought, might as well give it a try. Let's see. When I regain consciousness, I realize I'm in a public bathroom. Oh. But it's not a normal public bathroom. The bathroom seems to extend outwards forever, infinite, infinitely, like an optical illusion. The dim light bulbs are suspended in flimsy plastic strings. They gutter in and out intermediately, unsure of th themselves. My head feels heavy. Why does it hurt so much? Oh, there goes my stress. Oh, there's my stress level at 1%. Yay! I sigh and hold a hand against my temple. I can feel it pulsing beneath my fingertips. Gross. Human bodies really are gross. They're bags of flesh that contain all sorts of stuff. Bones and blood and guts and goo, with hearts that beat and lungs that shudder, and bladders filled with amber urine. I guess that's pretty much, yeah, how bodies work. Thinking about it makes me want to take my fingernails deep into my skin and dig it all out. But I bet that would look gross too. Eh, probably. Maybe I should pull my eyes out first so I don't need to see all the blood as it splatters on the tiles. But if I know anything about biology, which I don't, I'm rubbish at school, blood doesn't stay red for very long. When it's, ex when it's exposed to air, it oxidizes, I think. And then it starts to turn brown. Then it turns black. I knew about the brown part. I didn't know about the black part, though. Really? I tried to imagine what it would look like if this endless, stingy bathroom was stained with, with my blood. Oh. I don't feel anything in particular. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel bad. Maybe that's because it hasn't actually happened. It's nothing more than a silly fantasy. My head is still hurting. My footsteps fall against the floor. When did I start walking? I don't know. I feel like I've been walking for years. The walls of the floor, the stalls, and the sinks, and the dryers, and the bins, and the mirrors continue to repeat over and over again in a loop. A stuck videotape. We still have some jazz old videotapes from when he was a kid. she was a kid. It's mostly Disney stuff. Cinderella and Snow White. My parents aren't too well off, so we had to make do with our battered old VCR long after DVD players became the norm. Our VCR was like a monster. It made horrible noises whenever you put a tape in there, and it had cannibalistic tendencies. I like to spit out tapes with the film reels licking out. Oh yeah, VCRs. I remember VCRs. Ah, thank god they're dead. When I was young, it used to scare me a little. Lots of things scared me. I turned my head, glancing this way and that. There are five sinks lined up neatly against the wall, complete with silvery tapes and soap dispensers. I should hope there's soap in the bathroom. Or in sinks. Somebody stole in a roll of toilet paper and left it soaking in one of the basins. The paper flops limply over the side of the bowl. It's a bit sad. The taps are turned off, but water still drips from their faulty heads. They're leaking. The lone roll of blue paper is starting to turn soft. It's collapsing in on itself with something rotten. I keep walking. I walk past the sinks. At least, I think I walk past the sinks, but when I turn my head, I can see them again, right in the corner of my eyes. Five sinks, chipped and cracked with soap dispensers and all in that same roll of toilet paper lying on the rightmost basin. The roll of paper is still being waterboarded by the faulty tap. I walk by, trying to ignore it, but when I glance to my right once more, there it is again. Five sinks. Five basins. One roll of toilet paper decomposing slowly. 
The toilet paper looks worse every time I see it. White paper begins to flake away from the cardboard skeleton. It melts away. I feel like I'm melting away too. I don't know how long I've been walking. My feet are crammed inside my shoes. My toes are pushed up unpleasantly against the tip so they, so they rub red raw. That's what I realized I'm wearing my old white heels from Aunt Shirley's wedding. Not her last wedding, the wedding before that. I must have been nine or ten back then. I'm fifteen now, my feet have done a fair bit of growing. No wonder these shoes hurt so much. My feet my feet weren't made for them. Not the feet I have right now, at any rate. Why am I wearing them? It hurts. But I keep walking. I can't not keep walking. I'm afraid something bad will happen if I stop. Suddenly, alarmingly, I'm aware that I'm not alone. There's something behind me, but I don't know what that something is. I look back over my shoulder. My breath catches in my throat. Everything has been swallowed up by a musty, impenetrable darkness. The darkness smells like the inside of a walk-in wardrobe that hasn't been walked into a very long time. I tremble. My footsteps strike against the tiles over and over. My heart beats inside my chest. It knocks against my ribcage. My feet hurt. They hurt so, so much. I think they started to bleed. Sores of blisters run along the backs of my feet. I can feel welts in the grooves between my toes. They're all bursting. Give it time and my blood will turn burgundy. The dark red, the black. Aren't burgundy and dark red the same thing? Everything in here is the same. Everything repeats over and over again. The light bulb, the stalls, the sinks, the tapes, the toilet paper, the dryers and the tiles and the mirrors and... The mirrors? There's something strange about the mirrors. But no, it isn't the mirrors. It's the girl inside them. My white shoes slosh when I come to a halt. Everything smells. It smells of mold and urine and my own bodily fluids. But the girl who looks back at me in the mirror? My... her? Figures gripping the rim of the sink so tightly the knuckles turn white. Isn't me. I stare. She stares back. Questions running through my head. Where am I? How did I get here? What is this place? Well, look at after two of those already. You're in a fucking bathroom. It was me when I first started walking, I think. But the more I walked in these two small shoes the less like me I became. I started to change. I just didn't realize it. Not until I saw myself in the mirrors. This girl. I reach forwards. My fingers brush the surface of a mirror. It's sticky. It makes me feel sick, but my feet are sticky too, so it doesn't matter. The girl looks like me. She has the same hair, same eyes, the same nose, the same ears, and the same lips. But she isn't me. My muscles tense beneath her skin. Her face responds. It smiles when I smile and frowns when I frown. This face is mine. But I know it isn't. It can't be. I'm not her. She's not me. Lynn? When I speak, an alien voice comes from my mouth. My breath catches in my throat. And then... We're spooked. I feel something brush against the back of my neck. There's nothing in the mirror, but there's something behind me. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something cold. Even colder than the roll of toilet paper soaking in the sink on the far right. I don't know how long it's been soaking for. I don't know how long I've been here. I don't know how long I've been her. I don't know anything really, but... Our stress level it keeps rising. That's all I do know. I do know that this is it. The end. There will be no more repetitions. No more walls and floor and stalls and sinks and dryers and bins and mirrors. There's just me. Me and the darkness and the bad thing that lurks within it. Behind me. Breathing against my neck. Welcome home, Lynn, it seems to say, with invisible teeth and crusted with algae. We missed you. But that's not fair. They've got the wrong girl. 
I'm not her. I'm not. I'm not Lynn. Huh. I wonder if we might be developing a split personality, maybe. Uh, put Drake right there. Hey, Squirt! Rough night? Mm. I root through the bread bin, unearthing the last two slices of Warburton's half and half. Naturally, they're the crust, the cutoffs nobody wants. I glare at Jazz. She's sitting at the kitchen table, eating her own slice of toast, not the crust. She saved those for me. Oh, thanks a lot. No problem, honey! Why are you so selfish? Hmm? I wonder. Maybe because I'm a horrible person? Well, I know that. Oh, okay. I slot my bread, crust, I mean, into the toaster and sigh. I feel worked up. I've been worked up ever since I woke up. I was worked up when I was brushing my teeth. I was worked up when I was combing my hair. I was worked up when I was putting on my skirt and sliding on my socks and buttoning up my shirt. Now I'm worked up as I wait for my incredibly appetizing breakfast to finish toasting. I fish a knife from the cutlery drawer and peer inside the inner workings of the toaster. I peer a little too closely, actually, and my hair naturally gets caught inside it. I draw back, startled. Jazz snorts. Well done, genius. Wow. Jazz is kind of a bitch. Shut up. I stuck my tongue, tongue out to her. She sticks her tongue out too. Eh. I glance back at the toaster, but I don't lean in quite so closely this time. I tap my feet against the floor and sigh. Why does it take you so long? It's cooking! Toasting! Takes a minute. You going anywhere in a hurry? I have to go to school. I don't know why you're so eager. I always hated school. Yeah, but I have exams coming up. I picked up the knife and began to prod at the tops of my slowly toasting crust. You shouldn't do that. You'll ele electrocute yourself. Like you care. I do care, actually, and you'll definitely care when one million watts of electricity are coursing through your thick skull. I'll live. That's what you think. God, why do kids think they know everything? I'm not a kid. Please. Jess tuts and rolls her eyes. She does this a lot. It's very effective. Jess always wears a lot of makeup, but she's good at applying it. Her eyes are particularly expressive. Jess is pretty already. She doesn't really need makeup, but the makeup makes her even prettier. According to Jess, putting on her makeup is the sole thing that gets her out of bed in the morning. I guess there's not much else for her to do. She doesn't have a job. She just sits around the house all day. Sometimes I wish I could do that. I thought you were meant to be smart the smart one in the family, Lynn. I'm not smart. I suck. Literally? Piss off. Jess is the one who sucks, and that is that is literal. The bulge of her belly is proof enough. Not that you could get pregnant like that. I know that much. I might be in secondary school, but I'm not thick. Not that thick, anyway. The toaster pings. My crust pops up like I should be happy to see them. I'm not. Piss off. Put the crust... I poke with the crust with the tip of my knife again. They don't reply. Jazz does. Why are you talking to your breakfast, you crazy girl? I thought you said you didn't want to be late to school. I don't. Then why don't you get a move on? You'll miss your train. I know. I grab a plate and slide my crust onto it. I smear butter on the crust an inch thick, like this will somehow make them taste better, and a scoop of lemon cur curd for good measure. The lemon curd mixes with the gooey, bright yellow butter. The end result looks kind of gross, but it tastes fine. I take my plate to the kitchen table. I stumble all my way there, twisting my ankle on thin air. Ow. I curse beneath my breath. Shit. Hey, Lynn, are you sure you're okay? You seem a little out of it. A little, I guess. Bad dreams? Why does it look like you're tearing up? So 
weird. Yeah. Bed doesn't quite cover it. Terrible, more like. My feet still hurt. I checked them when I woke up this morning, trembling to see whether they were still in one piece or not. I was afraid they'd be bloodied stumps, the little bones all broken from being forced into shoes too small for me. They looked fine, but that was ten minutes ago. What about now? My, to my toes curled against the inside of my shoes. Jess stares at me. Does she think I've gone totally mental? Maybe I have. You were tossing and turning like a little girl from the exorcist this morning, Lynn. You woke me up. So that explains why Jess is up so early. She doesn't usually surface until, until noon. She doesn't have to. That said she dropped out of sixth form college. All she does is practice her makeup in front of her vanity mirror. Our vanity mirror, actually, since we share the same bedroom. Eat cereal and watch the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> well, it's an entertaining show. I don't blame her. I stare at my crust. My crust stare back, slathered in butter and lemon curd. My stomach churns. I'm sorry, Jazz. It's alright. I already had my revenge. The bread? Mm-hmm. Jess coils a strand of hair about her finger. She looks smug. So, what are you going to be doing today? More studying? Don't mention the S word. Now, now, you got your GCSEs coming up in, what, three weeks? You better get cracking. I bite into my bread crust, smearing with butter and lemon curd. The butter is sweet, oily and fatty, while the lemon curd is sharp and sweet. It's thick. Sticky. Feels like it's clogging up my throat. Maybe I put a little too much on. You know, Mom and Dad expect a lot from you. Don't let them down. Gee, thanks. I feel sick. I definitely used too much lemon curd. Jazz, please. What? It's the truth. After I turn out to be such a me monumental fuck-up, the least you could do is not fill all your GCE SEs. You're not supposed to be the- You're supposed to be the smart one, remember? That's what they say, but... My voice trails off. My cheeks are smeared with toast crumbs and bits of lemon curd. They feel oily. I swallow. I don't want to talk about it. Well, you'll probably be fine. You have to try to do worse in your GCSEs than I did. Yeah, but it's different now. You could retake your exams. I can't. Mm-hmm. Sucks to be you. Damn. Jess really is a bitch. Jess sounds so cheerful. It kind of makes me want to punch her, but I know I can't. Not anymore. We used to fight a lot when we were younger, with hair pulling and scratching, but... Now, Jazz is pregnant. I'd feel a little guilty about slapping her. You can't hit pregnant women. Even if that pregnant woman is your sister who really isn't a woman. I don't think she is anyway. She's only 19. She's still a teenager, technically. I click my lemon curdy tongue against the roof of my mouth. I should probably get going. You probably should. Don't drop out of school before your exams start. Otherwise, what would be the point? Sometimes I think Jazz derives happiness from my suffering. She really is the, a rotten big sister. She's always been like that. She used to bully me relentlessly when we were little. She was always kicking me beneath the dinner table, hitting me with a TV remote, and whispering creepy stories into my ear at night when I was trying to sleep. She told me Santa wasn't real when I was four. I cried. I cried a lot. And then she went and got herself knocked up, and now she's so heavily pregnant, I can't argue back when she starts being a bitch because I feel guilty. Maybe she's smarter than her... GCSE results give it her credit for. I drop my plate in the sink. It's coated with crumbs and a smear of buttery lemon. What are you going to do all day, Jazz? Watch the Jeremy Kyle show, probably. Don't you ever get sick of that? Nope. I don't like that show. I think it's mean. It's the sort of show that makes fun of people like Jazz. The audience watches the poor, sad, broken people pour out their guts and argue with each other and break down in tears. And then they laugh and cheer and applaud like it's something funny. It isn't funny. It's real people's lives and I hate it. But Jazz doesn't seem to care. I know it's me, but I'm not on that show. Why does it matter? Fair enough. I run my dirty plate beneath the lukewarm water and frown. It just isn't very nice. 
Says you. Did you give that girl in your class a black eye a few months ago? She deserved it. She called you a slut. She might have been right. Just prods at her belly. It strains beneath her shirt like a sharp, large, obscene balloon. Maybe I am a slut. That's why I can't argue with Jazz anymore. Hey, even when she steals my apricot yogurt. She doesn't fight back like she used to. Uh. Oh, I should also mention there's actually no choices in this story, so it's actually just a linear. Pretty linear story, so... No choices made, so we're just here for the ride, pretty much. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. The wind toys at the hem of my school skirt. I hold it down with one hand and use the other to support the straps of my beat-up old messenger bag. My bag's falling apart and doesn't close properly now, but I can't afford a new one. I'll have to bear with it, just like I have to bear with Jazz hand-me-downs, uniforms, and these old scuffed trainers. At least they're not the shoes I wore to Aunt Shirley's first wedding. I click my tongue against the roof of my mouth. Why am I still thinking about that dream? It must have left an impression on me. That's rare. I have bad dreams on an almost daily basis, but the details start slipping away the moment I open my eyes. It's definitely unusual for me to still remember, not just the gist, but the specific ins and outs of my dreams while I wait on platform number two at Strawberry Hill Station for my train. There are a few other people waiting, glancing alternately between their watches and the electronic signboard. Rush hour in London is never pleasant. The trains are always packed. Ah, so this takes place in England. That's interesting. I hate going to school, especially with a bulky messenger bag to manipulate. Once, I hit a small child in the face with my bag when I was scrambling onto the train. He cried and his mother started scolding me very, very loudly in front of all these smart businessmen. What do you think you're doing, you clumsy child? His nose is bleeding. You could have caused some serious damage. What do you have to say? By the end of this woman's tirade, I was almost crying too. I couldn't cry, of course, because I wasn't a little kid, but people don't think it's cute. Don't think it's good when teenagers cry. They think it's pathetic. I was 13 back then. I'm even older now. I don't feel any wiser, though. My GCSEs are coming up soon. Then I'll be finished with school for good. I won't need to ride on the cramped train at half seven in the morning ever again. Unless I decide to go to college like Jazz did. I don't think I'd go to the same college as Jazz, though, because she was studying health and beauty. That's a vocational subject. I think Jazz is a pretty good at health and beauty, especially the beauty part. She knows all about getting your nails trimmed and how to curl people's hair, but Dad wasn't very happy about it. He kept banging on, saying she was wasting her life. Wasting her education. We've given you so many opportunities, and you just fling them back in our faces! Why can't you be more like your sister? I don't know why anybody would want me- want to be like me. I don't want to be like me. But at the same time... I glance to the right. I have expect to see a glint of metal taps in my peripheral vision, complete with bassins, but I don't. Instead, I see a girl around my age, but not quite my age. I know her. We're in the same form group. We've been in the same form group ever since I started at Gray's Court School. She's a girl who looks a lot like me, with straight black hair and brown eyes, but there's more to it than that. It's the arrangement of the features on her face and the shape of them, too. Her eyes, her nose, her ears, her lips. She looks so much like me, it's a little creepy. She looks so much like me that Mrs. Manley, our form teacher, did a double take when she saw us in our oversized gray court uniforms in our first day in year seven. She asked us, in this very exaggerated tone, if we were twins. Like, being a twin is something special. We're not, of course. We're not related at all. Well, we're probably related in some way if you go back far enough, but the blood ties between us are so weak they'd be about 99.99999% water. It doesn't help that she has the same name as me. A similar name, at least. My name is Lynn. She's called Lynn. I think they're pronounced the same. Just spelled differently. She's me, but a me who reached into the Scrabble box and pulled out an extra vowel. Her name would be worth more than mine if you tried to play it on the board. Like, she's so much better than I am. And in a way, I guess she is. 
Her school bag is nice and shiny. So are her shoes. Her uniforms are always ironed and her tights are never have any holes. She's like me, but better. Lynn with an E. She'll probably do better in her GCSEs than I will too. That's a given. Lynn is really smart. I look at her. I look at her for a little too long, and I, as I often do, and she lifts her head. Her eyes meet mine. Her gaze hurts. I feel like a needle is digging into the back of my skull. A short, smart, a short sharp pain splits through the side of my head. I wink. I know this is going to sound petty, but... I really, really hate that girl. Ah, so there's jealousy arising. It is kind of possible to find your twin in the world, just an FYI. Uh, if I recall correctly, the reason why that is is because there's only so much uh, difference in DNA can produce compared to how much people there are in the world. That is very much possible to find another look-like of you somewhere else in the world. Just because of the limitations of DNA. Which I thought, thought was extremely interesting. A little creepy, but interesting. Alright, here we have Susie. Uh, hey Lynn, guess what Aki bought me? I don't know, what did Aki buy you? Well? Susie smiles smugly, her head resting on her hand, her elbow resting on the desk. Her legs are crossed, but she keeps uncrossing and recrossing them and adjusting the hem of her skirt. Susie's kind of like that. She's one of those girls who's lucky enough to be considered kind of pretty, despite all of her freckles, and she likes flaunting it. Her face is nice, I guess, but I think her thighs are the prettiest part of her body. Her thighs are slender, milky and white, and she wears her school skirts a little too short so she can show them off, even in the winter. I'm kind of jealous. She's cute enough as it is. Even her name is cute. Though her full name is Susanna, it is a little stuffy. She doesn't need it to make herself cuter. Being her friend is kind of bad for my self-esteem. She's had a way more boyfriends than I have. It's just not fair. Eh, don't stress about this crap. Better to find one good guy compared to 50 shitty guys, if you ask me. Not that it's hard to have more boyfriends than me. I haven't had any. That's not much of a competition, is it? No. Like I could ever compete with Susie. He bought me a maid uniform! A real maid uniform! Why? Why would he buy you a maid uniform? Oh, really? That's cool, I guess. I try to sound enthusiastic. It's hard work. I've had to listen to Susie talking to me talking at me, more like, about her dreamy Japanese boyfriend for the last month and a half. Aki. She met him online when she was doing a live stream. He contacted her and said he would compose music, and he knew a little bit about idol culture, and if she was really serious about being a performer, then he could be her manager. Now he's dating her. Well, dating in the loosest possible way, since he lives in Japan and we live in Richmond. It is cool, right? I'm going to wear it, wear it on one of my live streams. Neat. Yeah, I picked the outfit out myself. It's kind of expensive, but I mean, Aki has money, so... Susie smiles and shrugs her shoulders coyly. How old are we? Having a rich boyfriend must be nice. It must be nice having a, any boyfriend, full stop. Though I guess Aki's more of a man than a boy, and he lives so far away, he and Susie have no hopes of ever kissing and cuddling. Well, all the boys in our year group are stupid. The boys in our form are especially brain dead. Bradley hired her to try to give himself a tattoo with his protractor and a blue bureau pen in maths. He managed to give himself a makeshift tattoo, a lopsided wonky one, but he also gave himself bloody po blood poisoning. Good job, dipshit. Craig Bentley's always making lecherous comments and trying to peer up girls' skirts when they walk up the stairs. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. In fact, I hate them. Girls my age are meant to be interested in relationships, I think. That's what all the teen books and movies say. I'm not, though. Maybe there's something wrong with me. That's what Jazz says. 
She had a lot of boyfriends when she was my age too, but I don't think she ever really liked them. Sometimes I've tried to imagine it, but letting my boy like Bradley or Craig touch me with their dirty smuggy fingers makes me feel sick. If I had a boyfriend, I think I'd rather have a boyfriend like Aki, who lives so far away I never have to worry about him peering up my skirt or trying to grope me. Not like anybody would want to. Aki's so generous! Susie's still stuck in La La Land. She's winning over her boyfriend like he's the second coming of Christ. I could ask him to buy me anything, you know? Literally anything. He just jumps at the chance like it's something huge, some huge honor. Asian guys are always so eager to please. Or maybe they're just desperate. <laughs> just kidding. That was a horrible joke. My apologies, everybody. I think it sounds weird. Oh, Lynn. Susie tuts. She looks sympathetic. You'll understand when you start dating. Stupid boys like Bradley Great are rude and mean and make gross comments, but real men know how to treat their girlfriends right. Why is that? Because they know they're lucky to have us. I mean, look at it this way. I'm a cute young girl. I'm in the prime of my youth. He, meanwhile, is in his 30s. Jesus Christ, how old are we? Well, he says he's in his 20s, but I don't believe it. I've seen the photos. He's old, and he's not really super attractive. I think he's cute, but they are way better guys out there. Why should I be interested in him? Because you like each other? I guess, but that's not it. It isn't? Of course not. Don't be daft. It's about give and take. He wants a cute young girlfriend, and I want somebody who'll spoil me and buy me nice things. Everybody wins. But what do your parents think about Aki? What they don't know doesn't have to hurt them. Aren't they suspicious about all the packages he keeps sending you? You worry too much, Lynn. Susie looks at me pityingly. She always looks at me like that, like I'm slow in the head. So what if she ha she's had a couple of boyfriends? That doesn't make her more mature than I am. No, it does not. Absolutely. I agree with this statement 100%. You could have 50 million boyfriends, but they're all trash. You ain't learning your fucking lesson. But judging by the way she talks, you'd think she was far older. You should live a little. That's why you never had a boyfriend yourself. I don't think I want one. You will. Give it time. Like it's a foregone conclusion. Susie starts peering at her fingernails. She turns them this way and that, examining them beneath the lights of the classroom. Her fingernails are perfect, just like the rest of her. They're manicured, painted with nude gloss. She never ever bites them. Who has the time to worry about their appearance that much? Susie, I guess. Susie's been doing live streams for her bedroom for a couple of years now, and her attempts have become a Japanese idol. An English angel with white skin and blue eyes. It seems to be working out for her. I think she's actually pretty popular, now that I watch her streams. Or, not that I watch her streams. It'd be kind of voyeuristic. I think. In any way, who wants to watch their best friend since kindergarten wearing cat ears or a kimono? I guess she has a new costume in her repertoire now, courtesy of her boyfriend slash manager. Good for Susie. At least she's happy. She looks happy anyway, and isn't that basically the same thing? Nona. Look outside looking in point of view. It can be appear like so. Another drink. Don't know why, but my throat is like really hurting. But whatever, the show must go on. Dad and Jazz are arguing again. I don't think it's Jazz's fault. She probably didn't want to argue, least of all with Dad. Jazz used to bully me a lot when we were little, but I don't think she's a nasty person. Not really. Even if she is, she certainly wouldn't try to pick a fight with our dad. Dad's a lot bigger than both of us, and he's scary too. He'd be scary even if he didn't have t such a quick temper. Dad's shoulders are broad and his hands are very large. They're scared from years of manual labor. They're scarred from manual years of labor. Excuse me. He works in construction. Has done ever since I can remember. It's kind of good Dad works in construction. Usually he's too tired and dusty to do anything other than sigh and grunt and lie on the sofa watching TV when he comes home from work. But that's just most of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes he comes home in a really foul mood, his hands cracked and muddy, the palms bleeding, and then he starts shouting. He never starts shouting right away, though. 
He's always quiet at first, like a volcano before it erupts. That makes it even scarier. Dad isn't a bad person. He doesn't mean to lose his temper. I don't think he wants to shout at Mom or insult Jazz or make me cry. He does it because he's stuck in an exhausting job he doesn't like, but he never went to college so he can't get anything better. According to Dad, the job market's are the shittier right now, his words, not mine. And there's no way he can even hope of getting anything halfway decent. That's why he keeps telling me I should study. I have to do well. I have to succeed. I have to make him proud. I think what he really means is, don't end up like me. That's why he got so angry at Jez when she broke the news about her pregnancy. Maybe he thought it was some kind of failure on his part. Or maybe he thought he'd done any everything he could for us and Jez was throwing his efforts back in his face. He's argued with Jess on an almost daily basis since then. Jess isn't meek like me, and she doesn't get scared easily, so she's always so she, so she always argues back. Dad started to have to go at Jess as soon as he got home today, and then she tried to defend herself, and things got worse from there. Matt Mom asked Dad to stop, but he just shoved her away. Stay stay out of this, Marigold. It has nothing to do with you. Mom tried to say it did have something to do with her, because Jazz is her daughter, and then Dad gave her this look and Mom hid herself away in the kitchen. Dad and Jazz are still arguing, even now. I could hear them downstairs, the voice echoing through the house. So you just sat at home and did nothing again? You're wasting your life! Well, what do you expect me to do? I'm six months pregnant! I don't want to risk hurting the baby! The baby? The baby? It's always the fucking baby! You should have thought about that before you gave yourself to the first man that asked! I already told you, it was a party! I was drunk! Oh my god. And that makes it all better, does it? I wasn't saying that, I just... I don't want to hear it, I don't... I didn't raise my only ch daughter to be a slut. Whoa. His only daughter? Excuse you, you have two daughters. Rude. I wish the walls in this house weren't so thin. I can hear them yelling, even though I'm in the upstairs bathroom. I think the neighbors can hear too. We've had noise complaints more than once. The arguing got so bad at one point, Jess moved out to live with one of her friends for three weeks. Mom cried and thought she'd never come home, but she did. Dad cried too. He hugged Jazz and called her his baby girl and said he was sorry. He was so, so sorry. He said he'd never shout at her like that again. He was wrong. I stare at the ceiling. The beige paint is peeling and mold is sprouting in the corners. The water, now lukewarm, pulls around my body. The tap is faulty and it drips over and over again into the already overfull bathtub. It's not loud enough. Not loud enough to drown out the noises. There's always so much noise. I sink back in the tub, submerging myself completely. I want to hide from it all. Everything. You know, this game's not really that spooky. I don't know if I'll want to continue this for Halloween time. Uh, I'll, s I'll play it a little longer, I think. Let's see how it goes, but if it doesn't get scary soon, I might have to punt on this. It's interesting, but it's not really scary, and I don't want to waste videos on something that's not really scary. But anyway. There are rolls of fat on my tummy, and my legs need shaving. They're nicked here and there with small scars from my last attempt. I have PE tomorrow. It's my le least favorite lesson. I can't stand it. I don't like getting changed in front of my classmates. I always wore, I always worry compared to everyone else that my body looks all wrong. I close my eyes. The water flows about my head. It warms its way inside my ears. It's harder to hear Dad and Jazz like this. The sound is distorted, like it's happening on an alien planet millions of light years away. I think I'd prefer that. I like to live in space if it meant I could live. Be alone. No dad. No mom. No jazz. No Susie. No Lynn, either. I wonder what Lynn's house is like. I bet it isn't like this. And next we have number 86, Miss Hopper. Will you please step onto the stage? I want to obey the disbodied voice, but I can't. My legs are trembling like a baby deer's. My heart is pounding. I could hear them all. The crowd. They're cheering. It's so loud it hurts. They're getting more and more excited. The previous act is ushered off the stage. The red X that marks the spot is free. Waiting. 
feel sick. Why did I sign up for this? I don't think I did sign up for it. It must have been Susie. We saw an advert on TV a while back, and Susie said it was a great opportunity. You won't... You wouldn't want to miss out on a shot at Sordom, would you? She asked. I would very much so. I don't like performing in front of other people. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not pretty like Susie. I'm not self-confident. I'm not anything, really. Why am I here? I want to turn around and leave, but I've already come this far. I can't back out now. The roar of the crowd is almost deafening. Miss Harper, would you please step onto the stage? The disembodied voice calls to me again, crackly and distorted. Sounds impatient. The crowd are getting impatient too. So is Susie. She's standing behind me. When did she get there? She pushes me between my shoulder blades. Her eyes are narrowed. Come on, Lynn. We worked hard for this. You can't back out now. I don't know. I'm nervous. You can't be nervous. Not after we worked on our choreography. And you have to eat... And you have such a cute outfit, too. It'd be a shame not to flaunt it. Cute. I'm not so sure. This outfit would probably look cute on Susie, but it doesn't look cute on me. My skirt is too short. It's several inches above my knees. If I move around too much, I'll be in serious danger of exposing my underwear to the entire nation. What was I thinking? I never think. The longer I stand here in the wings, paralyzed with fear, the harder and harder it gets for me to think until I start to unthink. Everything I might have thought is slipping out of my skull like somebody's drilled a hole in my head. Susie, please, I, I can't. You have to. Aki composed this song especially for you. Aki? I glanced over Susie's shoulder. Aki's there because of course he is. He was always there. He came to see me. Because he composed a song for me, and now I have to dance to it. He's in his thirties, but he doesn't look that old, though. When I squint, I can see small lines beneath his eyes. His teeth are a little yellow, too, and there are blemishes across his skin. I can't imagine Susie dating somebody like this, but he is rich, so... And your mother made your costume. You can't let her down. That's right. I made it just for you, darling. Mom? Don't look so surprised, dear. I wanted to come and cheer you on. That's right. You can do it, Lynn. And Jazz. Jazz is here, too? Why wouldn't Jazz be here? If Aki's here, who I'm sure I never met before, it, it, makes me, it makes sense Jazz would be here, too. I'm not sure about Dad, but maybe he was so ashamed at the thought of his favorite daughter making a fool out of herself on national television that he couldn't bear to show up. I don't think I blame him. Miss Harper, if you are there, will you please come onto the stage? Like, right fucking now! The ants are stomping their feet against the floor. I can hear them. They stamp over and over and over again. It echoes inside my skull. My heart pounds harder and harder. You can do it, Lynn! Don't back down. You're meant to be the smart one. I've always wanted at least one of my children to amount to something. Hey, what about me, Mom? But, but I... You worry too much, Lynn. You need to live a little. That's why you're never, you've never had a boyfriend. I feel like I'm going to be sick, but maybe Susie's right. I do need to live a little. I can't give up before I've tried. I breathe in deeply and square my shoulders. My stomach's turning and I think I'm going to be sick, but I try to suppress it. The show must go on. The show will go on, whether I want it to or not. The lights on the stage are far too bright. The roar of the crowd is deafening. I feel like I've been tossed off the side of a ship. I'm drowning in sounds and sensations. There are so many colors, I can see the white lights flickering inside my eyelids when I blink. The stage is the only thing that separates me from the crowd. If they wanted, they could swarm forwards and pull me down at any moment. Hurt me. Trample me. Break me. I shiver. Susie, Aki, and Jazz, as well as my mother, are waiting for me in the wings, just beyond the plush red curtains, but I've never felt so alone. My fingers tremble. My makeup's starting to run. I'm sweating foundation and eyeshadow and mascara like some sort of a clown. A circus freak. The crowd goes wild. So, Miss Harper, will you please introduce yourself? What brings you to searching for the stars? 
Good question. Um, I need to lift my head. Stop looking at my feet. I doubt I'm making a good impression. My grip become about the microphone spasms. What did I have in the microphone? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I, I'm Lynn Harper and I'm 15 years old. 15 years old and the, and Susie's dating a 30 fucking year old? Jesus Christ, I need a drink. Oh my god. I, I go to Great Court Secondary School and I'm not that good at anything. The audience laughs appreciatively. But my friend Susie made me sign up for this and she put together a routine for me so I'm going to sing a dance. All right, do your best. Y yes, thank you. The music begins to play. It's a song Aki composed for me, but there's something wrong with it. It's muffled and distorted, like it's playing from the bottom of the ocean. Thousands of beady, unblinking eyes are trying on me. They all want to be to see me fail. Maybe this is what I deserve. I watch Britain's Got Talent and the X Factor in the living room with Jazz sometimes. Whenever they're on, and we always snicker obligingly at the crap acts. The old women with false teeth who can't sing. The stunt artists who trip and fall over their own feet. The comedians who can't get a single smile, let alone a laugh. It's just a public ex exercise in meanness, really. It's a way to mock and belittle those who dare to think that they have talent. Uh, I don't think like that. I know I don't have any talent. I'm just Lynn. Plain Lynn. I don't even have an extra E at the end of my name. And speaking of which... Uh, There's a girl in the audience. I recognize her. She's sitting between two dark and shadowy figures without eyes or noses or ears or mouths. In contrast, this girl's features are very sharp. Her eyes are awfully familiar. So is her nose, her mouth, her ears, her hair. She looks just like me, but she isn't me. She can't be me because I'm up here and she's down there. Lynn? The music continues. I stand there, feeling stupider and stupider with every passing second. I sweat makeup, animal fat rolls off my skin in gobbets. The audience are getting restless. They start calling out to me. I can't hear what they're saying. I'm glad too. But I get the general gist. They stamp their shadowy feet. They point with their shadowy fingers. They shout with their shadowy, ma shadowy mouths. Get her off the stage! She's not doing anything! What a waste! A waste. I really am. A waste. I feel faint. I think I'm going to collapse until... A strange... Stuck... Scuttling... Sensation... Begins to creep. No, not just creep. Caress my body. The touch is almost intimate, but in such an incredibly wrong way, it makes the hair stand on the back of my neck. What's happening? There are feelers all over my body, or maybe they're not feelers. Could they instead be legs? Yes, legs. That's what they are. Hundreds upon hundreds of tiny insectal legs. They trail down the small of my back. They probe the dark crevice of my belly button. They squirm against the inside of my thighs. They're everywhere. All of them. Horrible, horrible monsters. My body is crawling with dozens upon dozens of millipedes. Where did they come from? I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever find out. The audience are laughing. The sound threatens to burst my eardrums. I have very narrow ear canals. Mom said it was medical edition. It runs in the family. I can't deal with all this. These disgusting, filthy, horrible creatures. I try to pat them away, brush them off. A few millipedes fall from my thighs. They land upside down on the wooden stage, their legs squirming pathetically in the air. Hundreds upon hundreds of legs. I step on them. They burst, leaking black insect fluid all over the wooden stage. The audience laughs harder. They're pounding their feet against the floor. The stage seems to shake. Why are they enjoying this so much? What did I do wrong? No matter how many millipedes I shake off my body yet, more spawn to replace them. They're endless. They continue to wriggle and writhe, covering every inch of my body. Between my toes, against my armpits, even inside my mouth. I choke, gag, thousands of tiny legs, even thinner than 
Pipe cleaners try to press my lips open. I can feel them wriggle against my tongue. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to vomit millipedes all over the stage. Everybody's going to see. I'm going to laugh. Everybody except her. She won't laugh. She'll just watch and stare. If she won't do anything to help me. Why should she? I never try to be nice to her. Why sh would she be nice to me? can't keep up right. I fall to my knees, squashing several wriggling millipedes beneath me. There are more and more of them. They're not just crawling against my skin over my brow, inside my bra. Instead, they're... Inside me. Inside my mouth. Beneath my eyes. Secreted, secreted away inside my veins. I'm choking. I'm drowning. I'm dying. Everybody laughs. And it was all just a dream. But I think I'm just gonna end it right here. I mean, I guess that was kind of scary, but not really. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take a pot on this end. Find other games. I was hoping for more? I don't know, creepy visions or something like that? I don't know. But this just feels like a psychological... More psychological maybe thriller, but not really. Not even a thriller, actually. Just a psychological story. But not really horror. At least we haven't gotten to it yet and I feel like we've gotten a good chunk of the story already. So I think I'll just pawn this and continue on with other games. But till then, I am Terry the Fox, you are the viewer, and I hope to see you next time!